So, but let's go ahead and focus on the first match as we do have Leftovers and Granite Gaming facing off. Let's go ahead and check in with the players as we start today. Even though I cannot be back to back to back Crucible champion now, we want to try to play a tournament games as serious as possible to get the training, get the goal running and try to win this. To spice up the series against Leftovers, which would else not matter as much, me and Mopsy have a bad gun going where like the loser needs to cook. I will try to make him suffer and not get a, on his high horse with his win against Dignitas he had from the previous week and try to make him cook his delicious duck he promised me. <laughs> So matchup versus Granite Gaming is very amazing because there are a couple of players like Wolf to and Nanda, which are a very close friend of mine. I really wanted to be the person who gives them the train ticket to the Crucible, but unfortunately it's never gonna happen. The player I respect the most in the team is Wolf Cho because he's the best pizza YOLO in the team. Honestly, nobody, nobody else can do as good pizza as he's doing. Outside of AGC competition, we have a competition for this series as well. Whoever wins the series, going to cook for each other, so hashtag leftovers win, and we are going to be served with the best pizza in Germany. Kador, did, did I hear that correctly? If leftovers wins, Wolf Joe has to make a pizza yeah. for leftovers, and if Granite wins, Leftovers have to cook them a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that I, I came back to the right show. <laughs> is, that, is that what's happening? <laughs> Sounds fair to me. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Well, so a high stake match between yeah. these two as they begin to face off. In terms of standings, nothing too crazy here for Granite Gaming. They're kind of set right in that position at the sixth spot in the standings. But there is a chance of leftovers. If Team Liquid, Fnatic were to lose, they can maybe move up one. Uh, but overall, with it comes to our standings in this matchup overall, it's not going to be too big here for Granite Gaming. But hey, you always want to get a good win, especially in the last weekend. Exactly. So there's a little bit of positional play that we still have throughout the weekend. But the most important match is definitely going to happen tomorrow when we have Liquid go up against Method because mm -hmm. that's the match that can really change things up. If Method is able to break out of that little downward spiral that they experienced over the last few weeks and take Liquid down, all of a sudden Liquid would very likely to fall from the second place into the third one, so they would have to play playoffs, not to qualify for Blisco directly. And uh, with a victory this weekend, Fnatic could then take over that second spot. A lot of ifs, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and focus on this matchup, though, as we head up for Battleground number one in this best of five series. We will be heading to Battlefield of Eternity in terms of bands. Leftover takes away Dragonshire. Makes sense. Battleground, they're going have a hard time on. And then, of course, Braxis Holdout for Granite Gaming. Yeah, Dragonshire is definitely the weakest Battleground for the Leftovers thus far. So a very smart band from their perspective. And Battlefield is a really good map for them. And in general, it has been a fantastic map throughout yep. the entire season. A lot of brawls that we are seeing there, very fight heavy. And of course, oftentimes you are looking towards banning out Hammer. You want to make sure that your opponent can't see up on you. But poke damage, Hanzo Turanda now with a new rework. All those heroes are going to play a huge role here. Yeah, you brought up Turanda. She made a big splash last yeah. weekend and is continuing to be talked about by a lot of our teams. Also, last weekend in general seemed to be really surprising. Uh, North America getting a little bit of splash here in Europe with Zul Tank coming out a couple of times. Want to see if we might see more of that. It's pretty interesting how he was played as we head in to BOE. Yeah, the double support setup that we had with Zul from the leftovers was an interesting one for sure. And it definitely did a lot of work here on two of the Spider Queen where it was played. Up to the point where Dignitas decided that they don't want to go down 0-3. So uh, they went straight in there. So we're having a couple of things already starting up again. Uh, Mayev, of course, a uh, priority for the pick for the Kidney in general, so banned out right away. And Turanda is still a hero where Leftover saying like, well, she definitely is a hero that warrants a ban, but if possible, we would really prefer to have someone else on our side, like for example, Deckard Kane. So Turanda banned out since she gets the extra value on Battlefield. Hanzo is still around, though, and first pick goes to Granite Gaming, so that's a potential ban here, but Leftover is actually going to Abathur instead. So Granite Gaming has to figure out which poison they want to get rid of. So far they chose Maev and Diablo. Diablo, of course, great for Mopsio, as mentioned. You mentioned Maev there for Blakitney as well. But that does leave Tracer up, who was played last week in here on BOE. And even though I felt like Tracer has fallen pretty dramatically in a lot of our metas, uh, 
we've been seeing Leftovers willing to pick her up often, and somehow, even against compositions where I feel like Tracer should be shut down, DAB still delivers. Yeah, DAB is just going full beast mode on the hero, so I would expect at least like, a Kane to be chosen early on. Yeah. Leftovers with Ling still want the hero. Most teams don't really feel that Deckard Kane necessarily warrants a ban, so that it's a strong hero for him, but they don't think he's so high up in priority that they need to ban someone out. But we have actually them holding that back for now. Instead, wow. it's the priority of Urel and Garrosh that we're seeing from the leftovers, fully committing to that front line. Garrosh seeming to be the go-to here for Mopsio lately. We've been seeing a little bit of Murden mixed in as well. But having a Garrosh nearby with that taunt against a Genji can show you why he's gone up in priority. Also, around the defense for the Immortals, he helps out too. So you have a strong front line for the leftovers. And Granite Gaming will need to figure out how exactly they want to break that. For now, they adjust over by grabbing Decker Kane. One to take that away from Link. Wolf Joe can play pretty well there. But Hanzo also to come in and help with the race. And also, if you have Garrosh in your midst already and you're willing to give up Decker Kane, I mean, the second you pick that Garrosh and Girl combo, mm. you know Deckard Kane is either going to be picked away or likely going to be banned out. Yeah. So a hero that could see now is Karazim. Karazim with the seven sider, the Garrosh throw into that would be great. It also helps on the map to really chase down a few of the targets on the other opponent side here. And that is definitely one of the options that we could see for leftovers. But of course, there's a couple of other potential picks. There's a lot of Morphurians coming into play. But yeah. Karazim definitely opened up on this map and also helps with the Immortal Race. I am very curious what supports will be coming out there. Karazim was a virtual that came to mind as well, but I was wondering about maybe a cleanse coming out, even though you got Garrosh with the Indomitable. I was thinking maybe Rhaegar might be a slight opportunity, but he's kind of back there. It's actually going to be the White Mane. She has a cleanse herself there, so that's actually going to pop in. And then Li Ming to help out with some of the race, if you're able to get some pressure on top of Hanzo, but also you're looking for some resets when you find those picks. Yeah, so White Mane can definitely give all the sustain at that front line for sure, and the intercession on level 7 is helping with yep. the cleanse. So it's a big tool here. But we need the front line for Granite Gaming, first of all. And the big question, of course, is what are they going to go for? ETC, actually. And with Urel, is it going to be a blaze at least? No, ETC is solo front line, so to say. No real support from the second uh, the second melee. De Haka instead. Tall order there to make that work. ETC is helpful when looking at the composition of leftovers. There's not anyone that's going to be fully diving onto Hanzo, so you being able to have enough peel on that front line with that knockback is going to be helpful. I am a little worried about a full engage for ETC. If he misses the power slide, Garrosh and Yorel can punish him heavily if there's their damage to back it up. And you look over to leftovers, and they're going for that damage. Greyman comes out to help out with the race, but also to help find those picks. If they find anyone overstepping on Granite, they're going to shred them. Yeah, Greymane is also fantastic to race down the Immortal to go for structure, so mm. he has a lot of seizure potential in this lineup. But yeah, I like the lineup a lot that we are seeing for Leftovers here. I'm still worried every time I see an ETC without anyone at the side to help him out here. Yeah. At least in a composition that seems to be pretty straightforward. Now, ETC has a lot of a lot of strength on the battleground, especially when you can lock someone down into a uh, stun circle of an immortal. That's, of course, fantastic. But let's see if Granny can actually pull this one off. Yeah, I'm very curious to see him pull it off. I mean, we did get the surprise from last week with the 3-0 over Method. Did not see that coming there, even with Method having a rough time as of late. Would have thought there would have been at least a little bit of a closer battle between the two. Yeah. Also, one of the things that we have to point out is that right now, Granite Gaming is actually playing with a substitute player because at this point, Dark Mark had apparently some problems making the match here. As far as we know, no emergency or anything. So at, at least at the beginning of the series, Alt is taking over. And in case that you don't know who that is, he's one of the players that plays for Holy Bananas, the team that actually won the Open uh, Division and is now going to be in the Crucible. So another German player, it's not going to change the communication mm. on the side of Granite Gaming. It's definitely someone that they know and are familiar with, so he is going to take over the side lane for them. I like that they moved into Haka there, or even Blaze would have been a safe pick, yeah. just to make sure that he's going to do okay in that top lane. He's going to get picked off too much, and then figure out how he's going to feel out throughout the rest of the series. So we'll keep an eye on him, and we'll see how he performs as we perform for game number one. One, we're moving into Battlefield of Eternity in this best of five series. We'll see who can take it between Leftovers and Granite Gaming. Game number one as we are kicking things off here with a link on the left side for the Leftovers on White Main, Blick Kidney on Grey Main. Pody Boss in this best of five is going to play on Urel, Mopsio on Garrosh, and DAB on Li Ming. On the right side, Sport in the red, Memecraft on Hanzo, Wolf Joe on Decker Kane, Anande on ETC, Wolf on Dahaka, and Raid Boss playing Genji. 
All right, so we're gonna keep our eyes on Ulf here for sure. Like, he, it's gonna be interesting to see how he's gonna perform on the off lane. But again, he is definitely a player that will make or try to make his way into HGC this time. Not for the first time does he find himself in the Crucible, but he's going to be playing with the Holy Bananas to try and get one of the spots for next year. But at the same time now, he can definitely just test the waters a little bit on that solo lane. And we already have also Genji waiting up at the top lane, trying to see if maybe Urel oversteps and they can capitalize with a quick kill against Pody Boss. But even just putting the extra pressure on would make it easier yeah. for the Hark to sustain themselves through a positive top lane trade. Statement of an opening there for Grenade Gaming, trying to make sure that they can have that top lane be safe, typically for the Haka. Until you get to level four, I feel like you're struggling a little bit, trying to soak up, you're trying to clear, but Urel really interrupts those plans. So having Genji help him out will, of course, slow down that build up. Looking down here on the bottom left, Mafia's coming in for a bit of a flip, but Nande plays it safe, power slides out, make sure he doesn't get oh. tossed away. Grayman actually snuck to the top and is now trying to take the camp, and I'm pretty sure that, I'm actually not sure if Genji sees that. Yeah, he needs to move up a little bit. That yeah. vision is just barely up there. Okay, he's All right. it. Okay, he knows what's going on right now, and but that might have been a little bit too late because Garrosh is making the rotation too, so is ETC. They're trying to contest that. Or are they? Mopsia's already moving in, trying to make the move against Ult. Pops the essence here, the Haka, trying to escape, gets burned, but Mopsio is also locked down by the Gatena, and that's a bit of a problem here for Garrosh, but thanks to White Main, he's able to move away. Oh, I'm surprised, actually, the got picked off there. Ulf. Getting combo there from Garrosh, able to drop down the essence and get away. And thank gosh, Wolf Joe was able to show up just in time to provide the CC. With it all said and done, leftovers take the Mercs and have those pushing top. But this opens up, of course, their Bruiser camp and the camp to the bottom, which they can make a play for. Body boss, another chance, though. Might be a trouble. Can he get the knockback? He goes for it to Hawker. Burrows it. Does he have the drag? No, he just used it earlier, and Body boss gets out. Now at Barely, and this is not one of those situations where you have to be careful. You don't want to move back with Hearthstone because you don't want to lose out on lane experience and there's no one else to take that over. But you have to definitely play the lane a lot safer now and can't be as aggressive as you possibly want to be. So with all the self-sustain that Urel has and the Fountain, you can still try and make those plays, but the Haka is now in a better spot. D&D, not in a good spot though. As Granite Gaming will find him on his lonesome and that'll be the first kill for Granite while Leftovers work on their Bruiser camp. He'll be back just in time for the Immortals, but it's always a death that hurts. Yeah, and of course at this point it's again time for the Immortal, and that's when Greymane and Hanzo are going to be the two heroes that we're going to watch out for. Now Li Ming has that poke available for sure, but when it comes to the race potential, Greymane and Hanzo definitely dish out the most damage against the objective, and that's really what the two teams want to set up right now, making sure that those are safely on the Immortal while the rest is shielding, is blocking or helping out in case of the team decides to go for forwards. Turrets being picked by leftovers. They are committing to this push. Genji's trying to buy some time on top of the Immortal by burning it down, but he doesn't provide enough pressure. So leftovers take those turrets easily, get that opened up, and rotate over towards the Immortal. With the Aurel clearing the top lane, he should be safe to get a nice leap on top of this. Granite Gaming actually coming over to fight. It was a really cool rotation here. Very heavy pressure at the bot lane forces Granite Gaming to react, and the quicker rotation towards the Immortal allows leftovers to get a lot of free damage under that. So that was a really smart move by them. They not only get an experience lead, tiny as it is, it's still there, out of it, but they also get now the lead in uh, pressure on the objective. So pretty sweet rotation. Bot lane push with the camp and then immediate transition into the middle. Yeah, and some may ask, what exactly topped off with the words to go for that play? Well, part of it is Dahaka being on the field. With Dahaka being on the field, you know somebody is going to want to be soaking on the side, maybe use that global to burrow on in. So left over say, okay, well, let's go ahead and push bottom lane instead and get all those attributes that you just talked about to make sure that Dahaka, who wants to excel in the experience lead and get to level 10 before their opponents, is actually behind. So clever small move by leftovers, give them a good spot. Now, just need to make sure they don't get picked off as we have a fight at the top. Yeah, of course, the defensive position here favoring Granite Gaming slightly in this situation, but still the halftime show is already won by the leftovers. And they are now in a really good spot where they can just try and hold with Liming from the distance already. We're having Decker trying to zone everyone out here. A lot of dancing between the two. Leftovers not wanting to give up this first immortal, trying to build towards that seven, so mean craft on Hanzo can shred the Immortal. Granite Gaming steps up, so does the Leftovers. They come over for the defense of their Immortal. Ulf is still holding the side lane, but actually now starting to make his way in, trying to look for the drag here. 
Nice pushback by Body Boss, and Orf could not go for that move. But we have, as we said before, Greymane is on the Immortal, and that's exactly where you want to be in this case. But now the stun into stun against Urel here. Massive problems for Body Boss. He's trying to jump out here, barely escapes for now. But Great Boss is trying to follow it up with a kill. But Leftovers immediately react and keep him alive. Linked, on the other hand, seems to be in trouble here and goes down as Hansel delivers the final shot. I also can't believe Urel lasted that long. She almost got stunned twice by yeah. the Immortal, stunned by ETC. Granted, Gaming not able to find the kill. Thank you so much, White Mane, for those heals. Didn't get the cleanser actually at the level 7. It was a little bit too late for him to be moving in there. He went straight into the extra spell power instead, but now Granite Gaming with that pick are able to play defense while Hanzo works in the Immortal. Yeah, Hanzo is going Raid for boss. the work, but Raid Boss is already low. Mobsius trying to still allow for that kill, but Raid Boss still able to use the deflect and move out here. Leftovers are too far ahead though. They still secure Immortal number one in their favor. And with that level 7, they can of course now try and push in, maybe get a kill through the Ming with a poke and the Calamity as a follow-up. But Urel has made the transition out to the bot lane to soak the experience there. The Haka uh, now making the bro down. Body boss, now with these turrets up, is actually going to stay down here in the bottom lane. Try and threaten that possible four be cleaned up. Just make sure that the Haka can come in for a flank, so leftovers can stay in the top lane. They tend to break down these turrets, get some damage on the fort. But with Granite Gaming finding that kill earlier, they should be able to defend this. It's all coming down to mean craft and positioning. And while he bounces some arrows off of that well, he'll be able to get down to half health. The leftovers, they want more mob seals moving in. Good pressure from the leftovers. Breaking through the wall here, aiming for the fort as we have Granite Gaming setting out to defend. But it looks as if the fort is going to fall, and indeed it does. So does the fountain. Nice control over the top lane now for leftovers as Granite Gaming just has to watch all of that. Is half a level behind and have to be quite afraid of that early level 10 that Leftovers could possibly play out of them. I think I would have liked a little bit more pressure there from Genji uh, on Granite Gaming. Just jump on the back line, it makes me think about fully sieging a little bit. I know that Mopti was sitting in that front line, but it's something like Granite Gaming kind of give that fort pretty easily, considering especially with how low they got those shields. But Leftovers will take it. They jump up a half a level in experience again. Leading the charge against that global as they head towards Ted. Proba Pogue is just really limited for Granite Gaming outside of Hanzo yeah. himself, and that's definitely an issue. Now, Granite Gaming is trying to get a slight advantage by grabbing the camp at the top, and they have to do that early because Leftovers are threatening that level 10. So, uh, Leftovers are not really willing to commit to it yet, simply because they have that lead at this point. They're going to wait to get their rogue abilities before they make their play. And that allows Granite Gaming to get that camp, but the question is can they actually get anything out of it? See what leftovers will get out of this as they hit 10. Here comes that taunt online. Urel slash Garrosh will be the ones to open up a fight, but Granite Gaming definitely have the tools to get away. Between Hanzo and Genji, natural agility away. Decker Kane should be playing safe enough to where they'll get picked off. So Granite Gaming can soak oh. up 10 for themselves. Massive rotation from both teams to the bot lane. Leftovers, of course, going to try and uh, set maybe even a kill up. They want to make sure that Urel is also safe getting the camp down here. Grand Gaming will have their own level 10 for the next objective, and both of the teams are now going straight for those Shaman camps. But the additional Mercenary camp to the bot lane is going to give Leftovers a bit of an advantage and might help them to put additional pressure onto that bot lane fort that has already taken damage as this. Yeah, I want to see if they're going to actually attempt to commit to that, similar to what we saw earlier. Nah, they're going to go up from the middle and gun the Immortals. They know they have that natural push of current for the Mercenary camps. The AB can go from the side, will start to siege while Grand Gaming. Puts Hanzo in position to make some arrows off of that wall. Yeah, the Haka has to defend the bot lane because that's just way too much mercenary pressure that we're seeing there. So that's a lot of time that Granite Gaming is not going to have that Poip hero. That's a massive problem. The position for Leftovers is just better. They can take the defensive position on their own immortal towards the right side. And in the meantime, Greymane, without being contested at all, delivers the halftime show in their favor. Still, even with Greymane not being contested, Grand Gaming with just Hanzo alone is always able to stay near them. 5,000 health is going to be the difference. But hang on! Nande gets picked off. We're going to have Bukjo come in and try to get a stay while on listen. But Leftovers are going to silence him by taking him out. There he goes. He gets picked up. And Wolf will be the next one to possibly. Double kill here, really well done, and especially, of course, Ming coming in with the damage, but Mopsio prepping that kill against ETC, doing extremely well for his team. Level lead already for the Leftovers as they're starting to transition to the bottom of the map, focusing again onto the Immortal. And there's just nothing that Granite Gaming can do here this time. The heroes are back, but that's not going to change the fact that Leftovers are aiming for Immortal number 2 in this game. Not a thing they can do. They attempt to get off one Scatter Arrow, but even that misses. Leftovers get a half, shielded Immortal, and they'll be looking to push in the bottom lane. Looking for their second fort in the game, and maybe more too if they can find a pick. 
Yeah, right now you want to at least get the port, and the wall is already open, so there's very little that Granite is going to be able to do. The main question is really, if you can get a kill right now, if you just find one throw with Garrosh, if you find a flip and a good taunt, then you could easily get level 13 just by taking down the fort and that kill. Yeah. So all of a sudden, you have the option to open up the keep wall too and prepare for a push onto the keep itself. Leftovers are in a great spot here, and Granite is in a really weird position where they have to somehow try to defend this without losing too much, but also not expose themselves to any aggression. You gotta play 10 minutes, that's for sure. The Hawk is working on soaking the top lane, that 13 connects with Leftovers that you were mentioning. There will go the walls, and Leftovers don't have to commit too for this. Maybe get a little bit of damage on top of that keep, as the Immortal will seep on through those turrets. Get some damage there, and Leftovers back up with a two-level lead, a full town advantage, and Granite Gaming on the back foot. Yeah, the only thing that we're hearing from Granite Gaming right now are the sad guitar sounds that ETC is making, but there's not a lot of cheery life right there. Not really a lot to be happy about right now with ETC. Didn't yeah. really have an impact just yet. Now I want an emo ETC. Put his hair <laughs> to the side. <laughs> He's got a piercing in his left ear. I think he has a piercing. Why don't we pierce both ears then? Hang on, big combo comes out. It'll be straight on top of Genji. Grayman finds the kill. Stay a while, listen, connect. But here comes Ulf, and he's all by himself. Ponyboss jumps over the wall, tries to slow him down, while Mobsio is fishing for a meme crap. All by himself. Okay, I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> all pretty much isolated and gets attacked here right away. Is actually oh. able to get out for now, but that's an interesting mosh pit. That nearly was a turnaround, but there was no damage output that followed up on it. So none there's low, memecraft two, memecraft. Nice interrupt with Li Ming, the combo, the kill. Hanzo is down. And that's kill number four in the Hanzo left over. I can't imagine the comms there. None is, I got a mosh pit, I got a mosh pit. Memecraft's like, I'm trying to kill Mopsy, I'm trying to kill Mopsy. Wait, he's Garrosh. Oh, the mosh pit is done. No damage to follow up there from Granite Gaming, and they cannot find a kill. But it was a difficult task to begin with after losing some members earlier, and Hanzo falling means we won't be having him in the mix here too as leftovers continue to push in the top line while Yorel works on getting some damage on that keep. Yeah, no one really reacts to that. Hanzo finally is making that way over. No, he's not a okay, KO. They're actually taking a significant amount of damage on that keep. I mean, Ulf is taking care of that eventually, but that keep is already down to less than half health. Yeah. So, big win for leftovers here. I mean, you have a gray main here for leftovers. If they win some mortal phase, they can let the immortal naturally push on the top lane, go for a pensive maneuver, decide how Granite Gaming responds, and even maybe make a push for core. That damage on the keep is actually pretty monumental. Yeah, this is a real problem, especially with now also a double camp going through the bot lane. The shaman camp was taken, and Uel has now just caught also the, uh, the impaler camp. So we're having two camps push in. This is a horrible spot for Granite Gaming to be in. They need to defend the bot lane and to defend the Immortal. Good luck with that. They gotta put it all on arrow. They gotta draft Cupid here. Just go for it. Hit multiple people with the arrow and have Nande go in for a power slide if you like. Have the defense. But the thing is, Leftovers being the one bringing the aggression on the defense of the Immortal as they get ETC low. There's a pounce. And ETC take it out. No silver linings. Now they can at least defend the bot lane. But yeah, ETC fall. <laughs> ETC falling. You'll die less faster. <laughs> it's gonna be a slow death, but hey, silver linings. <laughs> hey, I'm looking for the positive. Where's here, this okay? positive counter coming from? What is this? That's my job. All right, shit job here by uh, by Granite Gaming. <laughs> that was absolutely horrible. Your turn. Well, at least they're trying. Uh, setting up for defense on the Immortal. They come over. Good combo here from Raid Boss on DAB. So Granite Gaming definitely showing that fight is still within their hearts. All right, there we go. Nailed it. There we go. Now we're back on track. Okay, so all now trying his best to find that drag because right now Leftovers don't have 16 yet, so Granite Gaming can fight on even talents at least for now. But they really need to get that kill and a follow-up because right now there is just nothing going in favor of Granite Gaming. It's the last chance for them. Here comes the quest completion for Garrosh as he's already looking for the next taunt. There it is. Our slide. Here comes the mosh pit attempt. But that's the sad dance that we're seeing from ETC not hitting anybody in the stale of my list. A bit more successful. The drag comes in, but oh Mopsio still lives. Gotta love that groundbreaker, that level 13 talent coming in there, providing him with the shield to be able to survive. Mopsio also keeping Greyman alive by tossing him away from the battle as Granite Gaming was this close to finding a kill. Granite Gaming does find some time to start putting some damage on that Immortal, and they're getting close, but Leftovers is back, and they got 16. The Granite Gaming still doing some Immortal pressure at least, but now the 3-2 level at disadvantage and the talent advantage that we have for the Leftovers. 
Once again, Podibos jumping in deep, and we're seeing the blue team starting to make the rotation towards the Immortal itself, going straight for it to get the third one, and that should deliver a keep, maybe even a kill. Yes, Nandes sliding in again. Goes in, straight on the back line, goes for Link, but he gets tossed away, and Mobs here once again. And the big boy taunt comes out, landing on three leftovers. Turn around, they focus the Immortal, and they might be able to get more. Nande, low on mana, cannot power slide away. Cody Boss with a jump again, Nanda isolated, and that is kill number two. Immortal has already been taken, and Cody Boss even trying to get another kill. Big pressure play now through the bot lane with an advantage trying to go for the keep while we have the Immortal focusing on the top lane. And that's where the rest of the leftovers are headed already. There they go. Menu wave gets cleared up. All grouped up in the front line. Opening in that keep wall. Forty Boss is by himself. See if he can get away with the escape. The Burrow to try and prevent Forty Boss from knocking him away. Can he jump too? Vending Wrath lets him out. Here's the arrow too. Forty Boss trying to go for the great escape, but it looks like he finally should fall. Wait a minute. There it is. Scatter arrow connects. But meanwhile, top lane. It's gone. Yeah, top lane is gone, and now they are even going to stick around a little bit longer, even though they are four versus five, since that Immortal still has shields left, and they are trying to at least get some pressure onto the core, if not even finish the game. Already, white lane starting to go in again with the heals, as we are having Granite Gaming desperately pushing forward and trying to find another kill. Joe trying to tell the story, but he gets taunted out of it. DAP with the perfect skill shot comes in. Wave of Force 2 and the Calamity. A Moss Pit will connect, but the core is spawned. It's down to 40. It's down to 30. Finally, some biting comes in, and Leftovers lose a couple. The core, though, focused and down. Leftovers are able to grab the victory as they go up 1 to 0 over Granite Gaming. Great game by Leftovers. Really well coordinated here, getting kills and the follow up through yep. rotations towards the objective, too. Well done! And Granite Gaming down one map in this series here. The last one for them in this season outside of. Yeah. Players. I think we talked about it in draft. So that front line, ETC just has such a difficult time controlling what's available between Urel, between Garrosh, so much CC being available. They had moments where they actually went in and found a target to isolate. But Mopsia stepping up at the end of the fray, saving targets three times that can count mm. in that game, allowing for them to be able to stain through and of course follow up with a fight afterwards and take the Immortal. Just great play overall and just shows why Garrosh could be such a strong pickup early in the draft. It was really difficult for uh, Granite Gaming to get any kind of pressure onto their opponent, and uh, Leftovers just exploited their own, the stronger rotations that they had so much better. Setting up that first double push at the bot lane, mm -hmm. breaking through the wall, forcing the rotation from Granite Gaming, and using that small time frame that that opened up to go straight for the Immortal. Things like that really give you advantages within the game that you can start to snowball, and that's what we saw from the leftovers. Yeah, and it's so difficult if you're Granite Gaming in that situation. Being behind on BOE, there's only two lanes, there's not much for you to soak. You sometimes have to go for Hail Mary plays, and the problem is the window is usually so little for you to find that small edge to get a pick. And again, when those small picks were available, Mopsio stepping up per usual for his team to defend, and of course, save their lives. If this was maybe a different tank there, say maybe we had a Johanna, maybe even a Diablo, maybe we would have had a couple of picks coming in there for Granite Gaming. Just too bit of a difficult task, and that's why you have to make sure you do not fall behind in the early stages on BOE, especially if you drafted Dehaka. Yeah, so with the setup that they had, they at least tried to use Dehaka to... There were a couple of moments where Dehaka actually nearly got a drag off that mm. could really help them to start a kill and then maybe close that gap a bit at least. Around the level 13 talent fight before 16 hit for the leftovers, there were actually a few chances where you could say, okay, that is an opportunity to maybe sure. turn things around. Didn't quite work out that way. Granite Gaming still had a couple of nice plays here, but leftovers are, of course, very strong here. The only team that was able to take down Dignitas, we saw that last weekend. So right now, leftovers just looking extremely powerful. Well, let's go to game number two and see if that power continues to be on full display as the battleground has been chosen. And we're going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. Leftovers with the choice Granite Gaming will have first to pick. Last time we were on Tomb of the Spider Queen for the leftovers, where they showed off that Zul. Fingers crossed. I want to see it, man. I want to cast a game. <laughs> the Zool double support that we had, and it was actually really successful for them for a long time, up to the moment when all of a sudden the four-man Daylight and Seal came out, mm. and Ding Dust turned the entire fight or the entire game even on its head, finishing right after a quad kill that they accomplished there. But definitely it worked out, like, very heavily focused on the wave clear, trying to make sure that Zool, who didn't go up against too many stuns, had the self-sustain with the double support that he really needs to sustain himself through that front line. And it worked out. It was also good pressure through the bone prison and all the stun yeah. pull-ups that they themselves had. So 
could see something like that again. Definitely Tomb is always a map where you can see a bit of a wonky draft coming in. Yeah, I really enjoy the range of the Skeleton Mages being used constantly to allow for leftovers to force the engages last time. Uh, so would love to see that come out there to see how fully performed against most of these teams. I think it was against a Medivh, was it Sergeant Hammer draft? I can't remember, I remember it was a Medivh. Oh, it was a Jaina, that's what it was. Uh, so trying to find a target that doesn't have an immediate escape seems where Zul could be strong with the Skeleton Mages coming there. Enough of slow to land that boat prison that you were mentioning. Uh, but again, we'll have to see if it does get picked up on to the Spotted Queen as we head into game number two. And when we're talking about heroes that could be picked up, let's not forget about Tracer again, which was played by DAB in that series too. Now we've seen Tracer already targeted by Granite Gaming in the third ban on the last map. Likely that's going to happen again. So if Leftovers really want to play with the Tracer and it doesn't get banned out in the first two rotations, then they have to make sure that they're picking her early on. There's a Mayev. Leftovers will actually be the one to ban out Diablo themselves. They have second pick, so yeah. I think from that position they just say, okay, Diablo's first pick material, and of course we would like to have it. But if they want Diablo, then they have to give Granite Gaming something else they prioritize even higher. And that would be a little bit uh, tricky. I mean, you can leave two heroes open and play around that. If Fisto even banned out now on the map. Yes, he is actually available this weekend. Forgot to update you on that one earlier. My bad, but Mephisto is playable this weekend. Uh, yeah, curious to see that he actually gets banned out here for Granite Gaming. You can see it working out uh, due to his playstyle. It's kind of weird. It's, uh, Mephisto is one of these heroes yeah. that I picked up. And it took a little bit for it to click, but it's very like Zerato wormhole type of style a little bit with like lining up Ring of Frost in a way. Um, I could see it doing well on Tomb of Spider Queen because you have so many anchor points to go back and be safe with with your shade. Yeah. So I can see the band coming in from there, and there's Toronto band too. The thing with Mephisto is also that teams are, and players in general are starting to get really good at always identifying where he actually is and then following up on that instead of getting panicky with mm -hmm. the shade. I mean, at the beginning when the hero came in, you can understand why that was a problem. Right now, people are getting adjusted very, very quickly to it. Ural and Deckard Kane, strong rotation in uh, the first one, two here for leftovers. Ural for the solo lane again. Deckard Kane together with that. I mean, all you need is Diablo with that mix. He, of course, banned out, but there's still a plethora of tanks that we can still see. Garrosh, Johanna. Yeah. There's like so much that can be taken on the leftover side still to make sure that that confine is incredibly scary. I mean, I know we already talked about it, but. I used to run Zul against Genji, believe it or not, back in the day. Easy point and click. He's able to dash away, but immediately stops him on the fight. I'm kind of on this train a little bit, man. I don't know if you've, you've caught on to that yet. No, tell me about it. I think I think he'd be cool. Just pull out the Zul here, you get the wave clear. Johanna basically does the same thing, but this time at least you have bony skin. You know, that's super tan, falling off your body, and that's a cool attribute to have. So we can have Zul go that route and just stop Genji. You know? Okay. And Johanna's banned out now. Perfect. Has to be Zul. Give it. Hey, I'm happy to see a Zul here. Even if we get you the to, double you support again. hands up. Let the god smile upon us and give us Zul. What are you doing? How to put your hands up. That's like creepy. No, it's not. There's Gul'dan. And? What are you doing with your hands? Hanzo. That's like the, you know, praise me, you know? That's the sign. You put it up. You could do this, or you could do this. Either way. Just try it. It feels enlightening. Praise the deity that I don't believe in. You don't have to believe. You just get in the moment. Just quit being so difficult. <clears throat> You're so difficult. Any other caster would be like, yeah, sure. I'll put my hands up. I'll, I'll make Trick happy for two seconds. And you you come in with the why. You don't need a why. Sometimes it's just a do. Leo and Malfearing comes in. There's still a zoo possibility. If you put your hands up, do it. No. <laughs> Maybe I'll be enough. If it doesn't come through, though, it's your fault and we all blame you. Blame Caldor 2018. That's not how that works. That's how it's working. We'll call it out. All right. Caldor's fault. We get a new brick. I wanted to have a new brick anyways. That is just creepy what you're doing. That's just <laughs> weird. All right, man. What is picked? <sighs> I'm sad. You're throwing me off my game, dude. Throwing you off your game? <laughs> what? <laughs> Like it is. Your game is deny. You do exactly what you're not supposed to do in improv. You say no <laughs> every single time. When you're supposed to be like, yeah, sure, let's see where this goes. You gotta help me in improv. No. no. Okay, well I guess the ball's thrown back in my court. Anywho, jokes aside, a new comes in. He'll be missing a little bit of wave clear. I think I won, right? Yeah, you won. 
You can have this one. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> we get a web, though. Yeah. That's way better than an old guy with a scythe. Yeah? I mean, beetle we, beetle. we got an old guy with a hammer. We got an old guy well, with a hammer? Well, it's a mace for Leork. As Leork comes in. Oh, other side for Grand Gaming. Yeah, yeah. I'm jumping around on you. Yeah. It's confusing. What do you think in draft? Who pulls us away? They both I'm a fan really of Leftovers. I really like again. I really like the Korea, uh, the Korean style that we're having on the side of Leftovers with mm. the Nubrak and Ural. And we've been talking this about a few weeks now, but very few of the players and teams actually went into that particular one. Yeah. So I really enjoy that as a combo for engage. So I am totally on board for the Leftovers here. I mean, LinkedIn, they got Kane, Blikitney in this game currently on Hanzo. We have Porte Boss on that side lane with Ural, Mopsio on a Nubrak, and DAB on Gul'dan. On the right side, and the red. Wolfjaw, Malfurion, Raid Boss to play Junkrat, Memecraft on Genji, Nande on Garrosh and Ulf to play Leo. All right, let's see how that's going to work out for Granite. I mean, there's a lot of things that are also great with the lineup that we're having for Granite Gaming. The wave clear that we have on their end is actually pretty decent, truly really Oregon Junkrat. But I really like that engage potential from uh, Leftover, as having the Anubarak together with Ural is a lot of fun when they're both are really attack uh, coordinating their attacks nicely. And then you have Deckard Kane to follow up on that too. Especially, I'm really a fan of DAB's cooldown. I really feel he's incredibly strong on the hero. And if he, when he has such a great front line, or uh, heroes that can uh, definitely help him out and peel for him quite nicely, then I think DAB can really carry the game through the down. I think a lot of the players on Leftovers is kind of a testament to why they're becoming such a strong team, is they've all gotten these favorite heroes that are great, but they're all starting to get into these secondaries and these third almost in some of the cases where they're really starting to stand out for DAB. That, for me, is Tracer, Phoenix, and then Gul'dan now yeah. starting to pop in there for Blood Kidney. It's his Junkrat and Grey Mane starting to look great. Body Boss has been doing great on his Blaze and his Irel, <laughs> speaking of, as a four-man gate comes to the bottom lane. Leftovers in their hero pool is just getting more depth, and it allows for them to continue to flex around. That was a clutch jump, though. He landed on the wall and then decided which side of the wall he wanted to come down on. That was very close. For a second, it looked like he would jump in front of it instead of behind it. But yeah, so he's able to escape down here. But I absolutely have to agree with what you just said. I feel DAB in particular, his Tracer, his Phoenix, now his Gul'dan, his Ling even. There's so many heroes where he in the past has addressed specifically that he wanted to expand the hero pool and become more flexible. And I think that's something he definitely has accomplished. So it's very impressive. Moxio here needs to be a bit careful. Nubrak barely able to move out. Nanda was already aiming for that toss and looking to see if he can maybe take the beat. That's going to be a statement that you're going to hear every single time we're talking about Mopsio and Anubrak. Anubrak is just one of those heroes that is going to always be cutting it close, whether it be getting that full yeah. engage that you want. Uh, he's going to have a hard time on that front line. Luckily for them, uh, there's no Hanzo here. There's no major poke. There's going to be that Junkrat who isn't the biggest amount of burst, but still, Anubrak with that low health pool requires the utmost coordination between teammates. So you'll be seeing him bro charge away a lot, especially around that garage. I mean, for Granite Gaming, a lot of what they are going to try and do is just get someone out of position and that's where Junkrat comes into yeah. play, that's where Garrosh comes into play. It's all about the displacement that they have on their end now to try and make sure that they can maybe flip I mean ideally you get Gulda. That's the that's the dream. If you get on DAB at any point you can flip him into the team. It's more or less a guaranteed kill, at least until level 10 when he has his aura fight. So right now this is what they're gonna be looking for. But Leftovers have done a very solid job in this early stage of the game to play around that. Yeah, and their wave clear continues to go up too. We have uh, a bit of barb that keeps in their line for a new wreck at level 4. And seeing the range lately for a new wreck, but here just looking for a little bit more wave clear, but also to slow down that Garrosh when he goes for the retreat. Maybe force out an early Indomitable if he is to be a little bit too greedy with it. Nightcap comes in for Leftovers. That'll be pushing in that middle lane while Leftovers keep up with the wave clear, especially with that level 4 Hanzo Khan come online, the explosive arrow. It just shows from a player's perspective that you're also trying to guard your backline a little bit more. The bed of barbs definitely helps with that. You talked about the yeah. control on Garrosh. And your idea is not so much of jumping back into that backline here that aggressively. You still have that as an aspect of your combo. But right now, the first thing that we are seeing happening is Leftover starting to push with the camp and trying to use that spell aura to their advantage. They still have to be careful because of John Red, but now that he already used the grenade, they still are able to get the first turret and even putting pressure on the second one. So very well done from their part. Granite Gaming, they need to be careful here. Granite 
be careful, but at the same time, they have also dumped up a lot of gems, which means it can be a little bit more risky if they would like to yep. try and find a pick. They only have to drop nine more off and have ten currently on the top of their characters, while Leftovers have not dropped anything off. Leftovers gets his top lane pushing in, someone will have to respawn there. But Granite Gaming is fishing. You see Nande trying to find a target. Good damage again through the uh, Corruption Sex here. 13 on the level one. DAB still getting the value and also dealing with the wave play on the gate itself. The level 7 Talon coming into play in just a few seconds should really help them. But they haven't turned in any gems yet, and DAB is now trying to change that. But Memecraft already with the interrupt attempt misses out on the shurikens though. So at least Gul'dan got rid of the gems, and Forty Boss is going to try to be second. Yeah, he's trying to force his turn in, he's granting gaming, he has to respawn, and they bring all five down, but Raid, Raid Boss, boss. Is, is full face of corruption straight on top of Junkrat. That small health pool is something that you have to be aware about. If you get hit by a gold down, especially when you finish that level one quest, you are going to fall. And that's what we talked about earlier, that DAB is really making a lot of headway with this hero, and on this map in particular. He's sitting at 16 stacks already. We're just now five minutes in. That's pretty, pretty solid. A lot of Gul'dan players will complete that around level 16 when the Ruinous Affliction comes in. DAB usually a lot quicker than that, and right now he's already making very good work. Mane is still the number one Gul'dan player for finishing that Corruption Stacks. Gosh, that guy's been finishing him before 10 sometimes. It's insane to me. He shows the coordination between him and Breeze. DAB definitely delivering so far. We're gonna have this middle lane pushed in. At least a couple of gems were dropped off, but Granite Gaming successfully stopped Leftovers from dropping off some of their gems at the bottom. But some went in the top. There's a total of 45 finally there. Leftovers actually got the turn in the bot lane through URL, and that was oh. a big one. So now, a flick hit me, linked. That's a meme craft in the back. Both of them low, but it's Deckard Kane who dies first. Good job by Granite Gaming, getting first blood. And now trying, of course, to complete that turn in. Leo starting here with 15. Only nine in. Turns around, drops a creepy hand. Wolf trying to chase down Urel. Memecraft already used his swift strikes. So he can't go for the kill. Gul'dan with the interrupt attempt again. So is Blikitni, but they let it through. Wolf is there. He gets the turn in. And leftovers moved away and just said, OK, guys, let it happen. Let's work through that. And this is really where a lot of that wave clear now is going to come in pretty handy, especially around Gul'dan, who now has the option of just trying to burn the down as quickly as possible. Still locked into that one-on-one -on -one battle with Junkrat up to the top lane. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. I'm watching Junkrat here. I want to see if he's going to be able to position with the rest of Greta Gaming and try to find a pick. He'll have Nande, of course, at the placement too. But all it takes is one slight mistake, and Greta Gaming can have a kill and open up these walls. You see them stepping up in this top lane. Nande, dealing with a new brack while Raid Boss focuses on wave clear. I'm a little bit worried around level 10 that Granite Gaming is not going to get a lot of value out of the Entomb if you consider what we have on the other side of Leftovers. Since Anubarak can move out of it, we can Decker Kane, who has a lot of heal available for whoever who is going to be in there, the slow alone, the root. Then you have Urel who can jump in with a target and even a Horrify. So I'm really interested to see if that Entomb is going to find any value for the red team. That's currently my concern when I'm looking at that. Yeah, it might be enough just to slow down Leftovers, get the Riptire to catch up with someone, but it yeah. might be a small margin. Uh, again, that will be useful at level 22 when you find the silences, but I agree with you. Leftovers like, has a lot of ways to deal with that. Yeah, the problem is normally when you're having an Entomb, oftentimes the team stacks up to try and get the kill, mm -hmm. and that's the perfect scenario for an Hanzo Arrow or even for Gul'dan with Horrify. Yeah. And at the same time, can you really get the kill? I mean, who are you going to kill? Urel has the Arden Defender and can jump out. She can jump in, provide armor for the, whatever hero is hit by the Entomb. Then you have a Cocoon, you have a Stay and Wild Listen. So I'm not sure if they're really getting the value there. But maybe, maybe Ulf can find the backline somehow and isolate someone. Talking about isolation, Cocoon is out and here's the Entomb. The result is to buy some time though, so DAB can drop off and get to Here comes the arrow, it connects with two, and 40 boss in the back line able to knock people around, but Linked having some trouble, and so is DAB as all. Well. Finds a kill, he swings that mace, and he goes for Linked. He goes for Linked and tries to get that second kill, and Link is low. Genji comes in and delivers the final blow as we have two on the left of us falling here. Granite Gaming in a great spot now to defend that Webweaver wave that was secured by the leftovers before those two kills happened. Now Granite Gaming is focused on wave clear. And immediately Leo goes straight to the bottom using that Neo Peasant, so be able to clear that up. You have Memecraft and Wolf Joe in the middle while Junkrat clears up top with Nande protecting him. Leftovers aren't going to get much out of this. Yeah, leftovers were a little bit too greedy in the last engage. I mean, the Entomb, to be fair, didn't really do anything. It caught Anubarak, but he immediately burrowed out and started to engage. The problem is, 
you had both of your frontliners engage deep onto the opponent's side of the map, and then Leoric and others could simply flank in from the side and had no one to peel for heroes like Gul'dan. And that was a massive problem for DAV to stay alive there. So a bit too aggressive from the leftovers, especially since they didn't get the kill. Yeah. If they can get that kill, it's a different story. But with them not securing a kill and losing one of their own, it was just a downward spiral from there, and Granite Gaming played that perfectly afterwards. It just seemed like a miscommunication, which is something that we don't see from Leftovers so much. You had Pony Boss and Mafia stepping up on the right side while DAB went for the turn in. So Link had to go completely out of position just to make sure to follow up with a stay on while listen. Granite Gaming able to split them up and see if they can keep doing that, or if Leftovers will make sure to clear up their comps. Mafia on the other side goes over, trying to drop off 35 of these gems. They do have enough for a turn in, but Granite Gaming, those nades, Keep slowing any attempts. The leftovers, of course, are on a timer here. Half a level, I think, Granite Gaming hits the 13, and that would be a huge spike for them. So leftovers definitely find themselves behind. And it could be worse if Granite Gaming gets that turn in and can push with the talent advantage. So the best situation for the leftovers would be a fight now where they can get a kill or two. They have that web just waiting on here. Yorel will have our own defender in five, so they'll be ready and prepped to move in. Tom comes out from Garrosh and doesn't fully connect. The unstoppable from Mopsio allows for him to escape. So one heroic down. One heroic down, but it seems like leftovers are going to retreat. They don't want to fight against the 13. They're playing this quite safe. They're probably going to attempt to interrupt and clear waves in the meantime. They have the power to do that, but it's still a tricky situation for them to be in. Mopsio with the engage Arrow. attempt. Arrow against two. Mopsio didn't have the barrel charge anymore. He just used it. So there was no follow-up. The arrow was great, but he couldn't re-engage. Funny boss, able to drop of those gems. 53 out of the 55 for the leftovers, looking for the second turn in of the game. First one didn't get much, and Ulf is able to drop off his gems while he tried to. The leftovers interrupt him with their own turn in. Second attempt to push coming in from the leftovers, and we'll see if they're able to get anything out of this. For all, this is a great situation to be in right now. They are going to play in the Crucible. Basically, nearly all of their players already were in the Crucible at one point or another, or played in a very similar competitive setup. So experience is what a lot of this is about. When you are heading into the Crucible, into this best of seven, nerves are oftentimes an issue. So for him to be able to just before the Crucible play a little bit again, it's great. Hanzo is down now as we have the leftovers falling victim again to the aggression of Granite Gaming. Riptire comes out, puts the damage on, and Granite moves back, can now defend against the Web Weavers here, again finding the kill at the perfect moment in time. The strength of CC against natural agility. If you are not quick to pull that, then you get interrupted. The transit, you will not have the ability to have it reset on you. And that happened to Hanzo. He gets picked up. Granite Gaming just set up for defense in the bottom lane too, so a good find of a kill for them. But they have not lost any forts either. And guess what? They still have a turn available too that leftovers have to worry about. Once again, Mopsio trying to move away here. Meme Craft with a follow up. The drain is in. But they got Kane zoning for them already, as is. And Podipol is also securing the retreat now. Also, level 13. Interesting choice here. Hard and Bones actually taken for Leoric. So not going into the ominous raid. Instead, we're actually seeing Hard and Bones. So specking a lot more into Drain Hope. Now normally we're seeing on level 7, of course, the Drain Momentum or Hopelessness. So those are the two that we occasionally see here. Um, in this case, it's actually Drain Momentum that has been taken. So it's all about the movement speed at this point on uh, Ulf. And now with the Heart and Bones, a much more, I want to say, aggressive mm. version of Leoric. And, like, oftentimes Leoric is now in these days basically that bot that is trying to reduce the damage output of the opponent's team. In this case, we have a slight variation of Ulf as he's heading into this game. More durable version too. This is one of those builds, actually, if you get forced into a spot where you play Solo Tank Leoric, which is a situation you don't want to be in, going into these talents actually can help you stay alive a little bit longer. Uh, so interesting to see that coming in from him. It will allow for himself to attach to a target and stick with them and eat some of the damage coming away. If you can land that Drain Hope, you're good, but that's the issue. Can you land the Drain Hope every single time? Yes, solo tank, Leoric. It's it's the, hard, the, but I've the done dream, it. The dream, the dream. Dude, against the Diablo, I had to do that once, and I went this build, <laughs> and it actually went all right. It was pretty crazy. Now, the thing is, like, Unyielding Despair as a level 13 talent is also an interesting one with the cooldown reduction. You see that a bit more, but if it really becomes throughout survivability, then Hardened Bones are the choice. But that makes me very curious what the 16 is going to be. If he still goes into the Crushing Hole, which would make a lot of sense here. I mean, first, we're going to answer that question. We have the Horrify and the kill against Anubarak. The Horrify not doing enough here. The second kill about to come out as Link is fighting himself in a hopeless spot. 
that is just a disaster for the leftovers. DAB is finishing his quest, but they have not found a single kill in this entire game yet. Granite Gaming is such a wild card for me. Sometimes I watch them and I feel like they're struggling, and other times they're able to just deliver. And this time they're finding a couple of kills. A part of the reason why they found a kill there was a new Brack was up by the Forge, but he had an Alfurian come in. Wolf Joe and land that Twilight Dream right when he wanted to burrow out from the fight. Meaning, of course, like the silence got completely destroyed, and of course, that followed up into a pickoff off of Lee. Granite Gaming with their turn in now open up the map. Fort in the middle, second fort in the bottom falls, and they have room here to take out this steep wall and maybe grab the top fort too. And we've indeed seen now in 16 the Crushing Hope taken by Leoric, so all about getting that extra damage, the 15% damage again if you get the full duration out. So really interesting build that we're having called again. Soul fight successful, they're going for that backline again, and they take down Gul'dan, and they're not going to stop there. Trying to find another kill as we have Mopsio stunned out and the leftovers are uh, more and more on the back foot here as Granite Gaming is just showing no mercy in game number two. I mean, you mentioned it. If Garrosh ever gets flipped, he is just done for. You can't get the war fight on time, and he just pops like a balloon. Mopsio is able to burrow charge away thanks to Link for the stay on while. Listen, but Granite Gaming, they're not done. Big wave in the bottom lane of minions. They push in and start to get this keep low on health. Mopsio is trying to control it, but with no waves on that front line, Blood Kitten is desperately trying to get rid of these minions. Yeah, if that six second keep falls too, that would be an absolute disaster. Leftovers is trying to prevent that, as we see right now. But here comes the Reptire. Damage is in, and they're still poking. Granite Gaming is looking to get the key, but it's unlikely that they're actually going to make that happen. Portipos might be low, but he can still push the back here. And Granite Gaming has to retreat, not taking a single key with this attack. Mopsio has a cocoon. Right now, it just came up. If he has that burrow charge available and he can start to dive on in with that epicenter and hit a couple of targets, he'll be able to follow it up straight into the web and force the engage. And afterwards, he can follow up into the horror five. But Raid Boss able to escape thanks to that Ripper Air at level 13. He gets that cooldown reduction and boops away from the fight. Leftovers. But still having 56 gems, at least chase away Grand and Gaming. But look at that keep in the bottom left. It is a hair from falling. It definitely is. So much that I would actually argue you could have made an argument for keeping uh, maybe Junkrat around, let him die and take the keep down. Mm. But they decided against that, they can take it later. Olf also with a really nice entomb here, just cutting uh, down, uh, helping with the retreat of the rest of the team here. Just throwing that down, cooldown is low enough to make that work here. Lane game, Strand coming online for Gul'dan though, as he moves into the Renaissance Infliction and the Corruption that already finished up that level 1 talent that we've been seeing. So leftovers get enough gems for a turn in, and they get it. I really liking the way the Ulf is playing this. He actually has taken more damage in this game than Garrosh, doing really well here. Stay while listen comes out, even the Indomitable being used by Nandos, they're moving back. But the blue Web Weavers are gonna come down next. So leftovers they get the turn in. And this is the fight on 16 talents where they can maybe get a bit of momentum going for themselves. Now they're two levels behind. But they haven't taken a fort yet, and this is a really good position for them to be in in order to take at least two forts, maybe more. But I am loving the Genji move here that we just saw from Granite. Yeah. Taking the keep down just as a perfect moment in time, and now making sure that they are not losing out on anything else. They give up two of the forts, you know they can't defend them anyways. It's all about defending the keeps. Yep, and when the next minion wave spawns at 1736, so they'll have catapults coming in too, so that bottom lane suddenly becomes a deal that left the have to deal with. Do have a Mopsio getting a swap to the back, but he is able to burrow charge away. The Twilight Dream burned for nothing. The leftovers can now step up, and as long as they play around Garrosh, never mind, just put a web on him. They're able to take out this keep. Yeah, Arrow did not connect here. They're trying to go for the keep. Garrosh is coming back. The keep is incredibly low, and that should be one eliminated in the mid wave. Really important for leftovers to make that happen. But the 20 talents are in, and Ulf is already getting thrown forward, buried alive. And that's a game changer. Here comes the stay on while listen with an attempt to save them, but DAB is already down. Is none the moved in with a taunt, the second kill secured as Deckard Kane falls. Mopsy has to get out. There's a Baroque charge. Granite Gaming, do they have a composition that can go straight for four? It's looking like a no, but if they can find a kill on Pauly Boss, they can only stagger those deaths. Think about a boss play. There it is. A total of three have fallen. It's Hanzo and a Nubarak left here for the leftovers, and it will be 35 seconds before we have Gul'dan back and Kane. Beautiful in two. Perfect. Nanda throws him in, and you might, I mean, I, I talked about Entomb earlier and said, okay, that's a bit of a, it can be questionable how much value you get out of it. That all changes once you have 20. The Buried Alive is a massive, massive game changer in the setup. 
and he gets a perfect one off against two heroes. Silences them as well, and that is just a bit the beginning of the end here. The Storm Talents for Granite Gaming is there, starting to move towards the core. We still have a couple of seconds left. Orb is actually tanking a lot of the damage here. But Leftovers is going to have cooldown back, and they have Horrify. I'm not quite sure that Granite Gaming can really pull that off. Still posturing here, makes Leftovers kill down the bottom. Ooh, hang on. The Tomb comes out, it sounds like a new brack, and he has no chance. Yeah. Flung across the map, Goldan's here. And Leftover is going to pray for defense. At that point, you didn't have Urel. She couldn't jump in. She couldn't help out. There was just no follow-up. And there's Deck and Kane gone again. Great kills by Leftovers. Was questioning if they could end. But with that Entomb coming through again and they following up with an immediate kill, there is absolutely no doubt that with the Web Weavers, they can now try and make that play. Gul'dan goes down too. Leftovers do whatever they can, but they did not even get a single kill in this game. 13 kills to zero as Granite Gaming is going for the core. Total of four and only Urel stands here with Web Weaver Waves pushing in. It's only a matter of time for Granite Gaming to start striking this core in that time. Time has come as they jump straight on top of it and start to clear it up. No one here for about 15 seconds, so the new wreck will be the next to spawn. And Granite Gaming, with 14 kills to zero, are able to tie up the series one to one. Extremely well done here by Granite. Great coordination, great fights, and the combo that we saw on the side of Leftovers, I was actually surprised how little value they got out mm. of the engagers with the Anubarak and Urel setup that they were trying to go for here. Nanda created a couple of great opportunities, good kills, and especially the timing of the kills was perfect. Every single time there's a Web Weaver Wave coming down from Leftovers, there's a kill or two that happen. That's an easy defense. They had, didn't lose any forts up to the last moments in the game, so very well done by Granite and a tie in the series. All I'm saying is Zul would have won that. Huh? Zul would have won that. Clearly. He would have pulled it through.